Welcome back to Speak Easy with Paul F. Tompkins. I am still Paul F. Tompkins. My guest this time, you will recognize from her roles on Chuck and Dexter. Please say hello to Yvonne Strahovski. Yvonne. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. Lovely. Very refreshing. Mm. How did I do on your name? Oh, good. Actually, I Thank didn't you. even, I just sort of was too engrossed in the you... flower. <laughs> there's, so, there's a lot on going your on. Suit, yes. <laughs> You have a name uh, that uh, I imagine a lot of people have mangled over the years. Yes. Um, and I understand that you were encouraged to perhaps change it early on in your career. I was, yes. Uh, it was suggested that I change it to Yvonne Stryker with a Y. Um, I believe that's also a porn so a porn star's name. That Jeff Stryker, of course. Right, yes, yes. Oh, sorry. Shout out to Jeff Stryker. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Yeah, that would have been good, Yvonne Stryker. <laughs> it seems so mm. old-fashioned to me, like the days of the old studio system, you know, when Francis Gum had to become Judy Garland or something, you know, that nowadays it seems like people are allowed to keep their unique names. Right, yeah, it's a little more internationally uh, acceptable <laughs> to have a funky name like mine. Although I did change the spelling of it. I mean, it, it used to be a lot more complicated because it's Polish and so it has a lot right. of consonants and no vowels and so it just looks terrible. What is the original spelling? It's like it's S T R Z E C H O W S K I. That's... So it's got and the R Z is like a Z sound. Right. C H is actually just H. W is V. So I sort of made it phonetically acceptable. Right. Easier on the eye. So originally your name was just a rearranging of the alphabet. Yeah, basically. Right. Yeah, basically. <laughs> so you started acting. Uh, you started acting when you were young. Did you study it in college? You went to the uh, University of Western, Western Sydney. Western, Western Sydney. Sydney. Yeah, um, at Theatre in the Pan. I did. I went straight from high school. I did drama. I guess my first acting class was when I was twelve, and then, uh, and then I went on to do all sorts of school plays and all that stuff. Mm. And then, yeah, I studied for three years and. Worked professionally for three years in Australia after I graduated and then came here. Right. So. And you had your own theater company in Australia. I did, yeah. Which we were, is, how many people were involved in that? Just two. It was my friend Anna. Uh, she's from Finland. And so uh, we were called Sauna Productions. <laughs> and we did, uh, we did a couple plays, uh, mainly comedy, actually. Mm -hmm. Very character sort of pieces. and. Right. Weird things like that, yeah. But you, so you guys were producing these shows as well? and We were, we were adapting them. So there were originally finished plays that my friend Anna had translated into English and then we both sort of adapted them into uh, for an Australian audience and we brought a director in and then produced it, adapted it, made it, painted the sets and did all that stuff oh, wow. and yeah, we were... <laughs> Full scale operation. But you were you were pretty much just kids, right? Like at this at this time. You were Um, we were we were we were in our early twenties. Well I was. She's a little older than me. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So you came here um, with a group of friends mm -hmm. uh, and just to audition, to do, uh, just see what happened? Well, I, I initially, uh, I came here on a two week trip with a group of friends just to take some meetings and see if I could uh, get a representative, right. an agent. And Had you been here before? I was here when I was uh, 12. I went to mm -hmm. Disneyland. And <laughs> I just went back recently. And <laughs> For the first time since you were 12? <laughs> no, because I came, I, I, I was there a couple times in between. But right. I, and then I was here when I was what? I don't know. My dad's 40th birthday. We were in Disneyland mm -hmm. as well. No, that was when I was 12. So I think when I was So yes, I, ha I had been here on, you know, tourist trips. Right, yeah. right, right, right. So then you come with this group of friends and, and you're going to uh, see if you can get some meetings and, mm -hmm. and get something going. And yeah. that led to Chuck. Well, basically, yeah. So I, I met my managers during that two-week trip, and then I came back to Australia. It was the end of 2006, and I and I had a I was finishing up a guest role on a television show over there, which um, had me working through January. So I missed the 2007 January portion of pilot season. So I came in February, and in during that month of January, I'd been putting down a couple of auditions that my managers had been sending me. One of them was Chuck, and so I flew back. Um, just for two months, I had a return ticket, and I I hadn't heard anything until the day after I landed, and they said they wanted to bring me in 
for network tests and things like that, and I didn't know what any of that meant. And then three days later, they told me I had the job. Right. And that was it. So I, I, I never used my return ticket home. It was, that's it, it's been seven years. Right. And then I moved. Apparently I'm living in the States. So was it much, was television production much different in Australia than it is here? Uh, yeah, I think so. It was, um, we worked less, that, I mean, less hours. That was the main difference that I noticed when I came here and did season one of Chuck and did my yeah. first 18 hour day. Or did my first, you know, 18 hour days consecutively for six months <laughs> <laughs> and thought it was illegal. Because it <laughs> I should call someone about it and report the production company because they were using us. <laughs> what, how did you find it out? Was it when it went from hour 12 to hour 13 and you realize no one is shutting things down? I know, yeah, I mean, I, you know, because you know, you're so busy when you're working, you know, when you're on that on a show like that, and yeah. then fight, you just realize that you're deathly tired at some point, and you look at the clock, and it's four o'clock in the morning, and, and then you wrap, and you're driving home, and the sun's rising, and it's peak hour traffic for people going to work, yeah. and you're going home. I mean, we, we worked, you know, the cast and crew, the crew especially worked. Oh, yes. Cruise there longer so than anybody. So hot, yeah. But nobody tells you before you start a TV show, no. you're going to be here <laughs> for a day and a half. I thought it would have been helpful if someone had <laughs> sat me down and said, you know, it's going to be a hard slog. It's right. going to be really long days. Because I, yeah, no one really did. And so I was baffled. I remember mm -hmm. being very puzzled for a really long time and just, I thought. But you didn't say anything to anyone. The, the, well, I. Because I, everyone else is acting like this is normal. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what I did. I, I really was, I think I've had memory loss from, from the lack of sleep because it was so, it was really, it was hard work. I yeah. think most people will agree, yeah. Well, also that was that was a, a very uh, uh, action-oriented show for, mm -hmm. for a comedy. There was a lot of, there was a lot of stunt work, for running, jumping, yes. you know, it's very physical, <clears throat> which uh, uh, at the end of a long day, I'm sure it felt even longer to you. Yeah, I mean, it felt like going to the gym every day because, I, I mean, yeah. I had to do a lot of fights scenes and a lot of running in high heels and mind you I was the biggest tomboy coming from Australia I didn't mm. even know how to walk in high heels when I first landed here and then they threw me in stilettos and I had to learn kung fu and do all that stuff. How big of a transition was it for you uh, going from uh, Chuck to Dexter? Probably I would imagine less physically demanding Dexter yeah. mm -hmm. but obviously a much darker show. Yes, much more sort of uh, challenging in terms of the writing and the material right. and um, and also the fact that I was the new kid on the block in an established mm -hmm. show. So I sort of got, uh, I, I understood how it had been when we had guest stars on our show and they were sort of nervous <laughs> right. coming in and I was like, eh, whatever. So, you know, I, and you know, I remember going in for my first read through and thinking, I wonder if everyone's nice and everyone was amazing, mm. obviously. And it, it was amazing. I mean, I, I really felt challenged d during that, doing the role and I, and I didn't anticipate to have uh, so much to mm -hmm. work with as well. And Michael and Jennifer, I just think are such great, um, actors and they they really set the bar for the standard and everyone just works really hard so it, you you keep rising with them yeah was yeah. the subject matter tough for you all uh, a little bit you know I, I because you know she, the character that I played Hannah McKay she she had done bad things in her life mm. and she had killed people and so you know it's kind of as bad as it gets so you you I mean in my mind I always think you know when you're playing a character that is seemingly, or in theory, unlikable, you have to find a way to make yourself likable. Like I remember watching Monster with Charlize Theron mm -hmm. and it gets you at the end, you feel sorry for her because she, she lets you in a certain way playing that character. So I, you, you have to find something. I think that was the biggest challenge is to try and remain likable. And my hope was that they would end up rooting for Hannah and Dexter, which some people did, some people didn't, you know, yeah. there's always going to be. Absolutely. Yeah. But I think for, for you, the challenge is, and, and to tell me if you, uh, if you agree or disagree, the challenge is you have to first find something to like about this character in yeah. order for the audience to find you likable. Well, I think for me it was more about justifying her actions. Mm -hmm. And to me, uh, 
to me, in my mind, Hannah, I mean, it's all justified. It's all sort of, she was all about just wanting to escape her past. She got tied up, she was naive and young, she got mixed up in, in a murder with someone that she wouldn't, she probably wouldn't have done it, I, I think, mm -hmm. if it wasn't, if she hadn't been tied up with this guy. And so she was punished for it, she was sent to juvenile detention, and I think ever since that point, she was just trying to put it behind her. But there were people stopping her and getting in her way, and in my mind, that's why she, the only way to, for her to have a happy life and to just forget about it all was to remove those people mm -hmm. who were trying to stop her. It was the only way she knew how at that point. So there's a, I mean, that's the sick justification that I come up with that right. I'm okay with. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> um, you know, because that's what you do when you're an actor. You have to mm -hmm. figure it out. Yeah. yeah. Tell me about I Frankenstein. We had uh, Aaron Eckhart on this show before. Okay. Um, and he talked about it a little bit, but uh, okay. I would like to hear your experience of I Frankenstein. Well, I Frankenstein, you want to hear what it's about? Yes, I or, do. Well, it's, a, it's a new take on the traditional I Frankenstein mm -hmm. mythology. Right. Um, we sort of springboard off of the end of Mary Shelley's novel into the present day. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's very much a, a, about the Brits of modern day tale. Um, it's based on a graphic novel, yes? Yeah, uh, loosely based on a graphic novel. Um, and then Stuart Beatty sort of wrote and directed the, the script. So it's 200 years after the events of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Yes. Frankenstein's monster is still alive. Still alive, an immortal creature, and uh, there are people vying for the secret of his immortality. So, like, the, the gargoyles represent the humans, and they they protect the humans, and then there's these demons that are also fighting the gargoyles at the same time, and they're all trying to find out the secret to his immortality. So when you're talking about gargoyles, are you talking about Actu the actual things that you see on buildings. Yes. And they, they come to life? Or they they're, come they're to alive, life. we don't realize. Humans do not realize that they... They are actually alive. Right. That's right, yeah. And they're watching over us. Yes, there's a okay. lot of cool special effects and stuff. Um, How do you fit into all this? <laughs> How do I fit into it? Yes, you. Well, I am Dr. Tara Wade. I play an electrophysiologist. I'm from England, actually, mm -hmm. in the movie. Um, and I am a modern day Victor Frankenstein, so I'm researching how to reanimate things. Right. And I don't believe in gargoyles and demons and Frankensteins and all these things. And, uh, and then one day it comes into my lab and I realize that this is the world that I am living in. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this movie's in 3D? It's in 3D. It's going to premiere in 3D at IMAX theaters uh, mm. at January 21st, I believe. Uh, yeah, mm. yeah. In addition to your on-camera acting, you also uh, do a voice for the Mass Effect video game series. Yes. Uh, what is that character? Miranda. <laughs> <laughs> Miranda, yeah. <laughs> Do you play video games? No. I, <laughs> well, I play Scrabble uh, on the computer, on that the counts. iPad. That, that that's counts. technically a video game. That's a video game. I used to play Angry Birds. Uh, that was very addicted to Angry Birds. Mm -hmm. But I've, I've sort of quit that a little bit. Cold um, turkey? Yeah, I would say. Was I, there an intervention? Uh, look, I think I just got sent too many uh, stuffed Angry Bird, you know, animals. Uh, <laughs> oh no, because people knew you liked Angry Birds. Because people know I like Angry Birds, yeah. But my dogs really like those uh, those toys. Sure. They love the sounds that they make, so yeah. <laughs> so now, now I'm onto Scrabble. Mm -hmm. That's as good as it gets with me. So video games, not your thing. Have you tried the Mass Effect video game? I haven't, because I don't own... Um, a gaming system, a is platform. It, is it on a PlayStation? I can't remember. <laughs> I don't. I think I mean, it's usually on, they're on, or on everything. Xbox. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's on one of those. No, I don't own one. I've seen clips of it because you can, you, you know, you can Google it. There's okay. the famous Miranda, the kissing scene that everyone loves. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. They put. They gave me a nice, um, a nice butt actually because it's a computer. <laughs> Because they scanned my face into it, and and then they made me a brunette, uh, mm. and then the body's not mine. The body is not mine. I would like to verify, because <laughs> it's you know it's very <laughs> video gamey. Video gamey yes, would understand. be the polite terminology. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, nice. <laughs> but does that <laughs> has that given you a whole new world of fans that maybe aren't even familiar with your other work? I would say so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that happens. Will you be doing more 
uh, video game voices, or do you think that'll be it? I don't know. I've done a few now, so mm. uh, we'll see. It depends if it comes up. You know. Correct. <laughs> Not opposed to it. If the if the I mean, is is your character? I haven't uh, played the latest Mass Effect. Uh, is Miranda still part of the Mass Effect universe? Uh, you mean, did she die? I guess I that's what I'm asking. I don't know if she died. No, I you think. Didn't have to voice well, no, any no, no. I think roles. I think Mass Effect one, two, and three. They only made three. Three was the final installment of the the trilogy thing. They I, like to say that. I feel terrible if I'm saying the wrong thing. I don't think I am though. <laughs> we should <laughs> check with the Mass Effect people. Absolutely. Yes. We'll, 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 we'll um, do due diligence on this. Well, yeah. Before it goes out on the line. <laughs> Let me pose this scenario to you. Uh, you. Uh, Zach Levi, Michael C. Hall, you've all done Broadway. Mm -hmm. What if you all did a musical together? <laughs> Only if I get to be a rapper. <laughs> because you don't sing? Uh, I, could think, I think I could get away with rapping on stage. Like the female Eminem. Do you have? I have a, I, I really want to do that actually. <laughs> do you have good flow? Do I have good flow? Yeah. Good flow? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, that like might good. Be. Well, I can dance. Have you had experience rapping before? No. Only privately. <laughs> uh, That's where it begins, though. It is, yeah. I have, you, I have a real future in it, I think. Right. I think this is an exciting <laughs> musical, whatever this is going to be. Yeah. Where <laughs> it's a, a rap Broadway hybrid. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. It, I think it'll happen one day. <laughs> <laughs> I have no doubt. Absolutely. Now that we've planted the seed. Yvonne Strahovski, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. And uh, I, Frankenstein, will be in theaters January 24th. My thanks to Yvonne Strahovski. Join us next time on Speakeasy, where my guest will be a different person. <laughs> Is Frankenstein scary? No. No, no, no. It's not a horror. It doesn't have a flat head. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and check back every Monday to see who I interview next. And for more info about Speakeasy, visit MadeMan.com.